What's up guys? So by now, most of you, if not all of you, have probably heard of gaming streaming services like Google Stadia, GeForce Now, or even Steam in-home streaming. And while these can be pretty cool, they all rely on some other type of hardware that you purchase or build to get yourself in the game. But what if I told you there was a different option? What if I told you that you could have a full Windows 10 PC with high level gaming hardware that you can stream from any device, anytime, basically anywhere with an internet connection? No proprietary hardware or console required. Sounds pretty crazy, right? Well, it's not, and it's actually already happening by a company called Shadow, and it is awesome. So let's roll that intro, and I'll tell you why. Let's go. URCD Key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, so let's answer the question I'm sure all of you are asking right now. What exactly is Shadow? Essentially, Shadow is a full-featured cloud PC with dedicated storage that you can access from any device at any time. So you can access your actual games with their progress and achievements and everything from all of the platforms you know and love like Steam, Epic Game Store, GOG, Origin, Uplay, Battle.net, all of that. So their data centers are always up to date as well, so you can focus on gaming and you don't have to worry about updating your hardware. You just log on and the shadow servers, they handle everything else. At this point, I'm sure either you're confused or your mind is already blown and you're wondering how the actual f is this possible? And why hasn't anyone thought of this yet? It's 2020 for fuck's sake. I know, I know, and this was my reaction to shadow when I first started using it too, but let me explain. Unlike a regular game streaming service, Shadow is a full computer you access remotely by just logging into your account, like I said before. Everything else relies on a secured infrastructure that links their own data centers with your Shadow on the other end and your dedicated device on the other end. The people at Shadow want to provide a cloud computing experience equal to or better than the one you get on a high-end local machine by handling all the computing power and streaming in their data centers and sending you only the resulting image. This is why you can literally stream the resulting image to any device. And when I say that, I really mean any. From Windows computers, Mac OS computers, your iOS device, your Android device, Linux, or even your living room TV. Remember those things called HTPCs that everybody used to build and even I did like way back in the day. I think that was my first video. <laughs> yep, those are gone basically. And it doesn't matter what you want to use Shadow on, it just works. All right, so I'll try to contain my excitement for a bit and let's go ahead and move on to how you get started with Shadow first. So you'll need to head over to their site and you will see three different levels of Shadow servers. But currently, only the first tier called Shadow Boost is available. So we're gonna focus on that for now. With Shadow Boost, you are getting a gaming PC with the following specs. For the GPU, you get a GTX 1080 or equivalent, which is still a very capable video card. You get a CPU with four cores up to 3.4 gigahertz, 12 gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte SSD, which I'm told is actually upgradable, and it supports a resolution up to 4K 60 frames per second. So high refresh rates like 144 hertz and 165 hertz all work, and we'll get to test that in a minute. Once you've selected your shadow and downloaded the app to your computer or device, you need to log in and then you'll be greeted by your very own Windows 10 PC. Inside of this, you can do everything that you would usually be able to do in a Windows computer, like browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, downloading programs, or removing them if you don't want them. Uh, you can do photo and video editing, and most of all, 
gaming. And you can literally do this across all of your devices using the hardware that you have in the server. If you have a nice steady internet connection and they suggest having at least 15 megabits per second speed to run 1080p and 30 megabits per second for 4K to run as intended. But Shadow has also been optimized for most connections, even 4G LTE, so you can do it right off your phone or tablet. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna show you right now. So look over here. I'm gonna boot up my Shadow desktop right here out of my iOS device. All I gotta do is press the button and let Shadow do its thing. It's gonna log me into my own Shadow server. Go ahead and press Start Shadow and it will immediately load your desktop. So just give it a few minutes, or not even a few minutes, give it like a minute. And there we go, we got our desktop right here. And as you can see, if you're on mobile and you wanna play mobile games, you can use a virtual controller if you don't have a dedicated controller for that. And you can hear the Windows noises of it actually uh, getting a new USB device and then turning it on and off. So that's actually pretty funny. And then um, you can use a keyboard like that if you need to type and browse the web. But basically it's a full fledged just image of a Windows 10 PC on your cell phone. And uh, yeah, you can go ahead and play games right on your cell phone if you feel like it. So that's uh, pretty amazing. Now let's really get into what my personal shadow server is running as far as specs and see if what they say on their website is really true. So my personal shadow server is running a Xeon E5 2667 V3 with four cores and eight threads at 3.2 gigahertz. We also have 12 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD for storage. All that they stayed on their site, so that's correct. And now the part that I was a bit skeptical on uh, was the GPU. For this, we are actually running an NVIDIA Quadro P5000. Now, before doing some research on this, I had zero experience with this card. So of course, I checked GPUUserBenchmark.com like I always do, and it looks like this card is actually very comparable to a GTX 1080, with our Quadro card being about just 10% slower. So all in all, what I have here is very true to what they state on the site. Now, I know a very crucial part of building a PC when you first boot it up is installing all the drivers for your hardware. Well, of course, you don't have to do this with Shadow. They handle all this, like I said before, and if there is an update for your server, they'll notify you upon your login, and you can update your server and keep all of your hardware up to date that way, and it's very, very easy. You just basically press a button, and it updates everything for you. Once you get past all of that, you will always see a little shadow logo up at the top in which you can use to change all of your settings, allocate more bandwidth, set up all of your peripherals and more. Like I said, you can download basically whatever you want as long as it fits on the storage drive you've selected. And of course, I downloaded a few games and even MSI Afterburner to benchmark those games for you really quick. So starting with CSGO, we set it to 1080p high and it seemed to run very well actually with one exception, unfortunately. So something really weird happens with this game, and I'm not sure if it's just this game either, but it's like, uh, it might be input lag, or maybe it's simply not just communicating to our shadow server fast enough because of our internet connection. So this gives this kind of game a very like slow feeling. Um, so just kind of like picture you're very tired in the middle of a workout, but you still try your hardest to keep moving and finish the workout, and you're feeling like a little bit sluggish in your mind. So it's kind of like running at 165 hertz, but it feels like you're actually gaming at 60 hertz which is not great for a shooter game like this one so i asked shadow about this and they told me it could also be because i live in washington and in my state they aren't exactly optimized for max performance yet they call it explorer mode right now so uh, hopefully they're going to get that fixed in the future um and yeah because it'll be great for people to be able to play competitive games and do it with their shadow server uh but right now it looks like in some areas that may not be possible next we ran our 3d mark benchmarks firestrike and time spy in which both got very respectable scores showing that even the cheapest version of Shadow has plenty of gaming horsepower. And lastly, I ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, for its more AAA game style benchmark. And the system did very well scoring an average FPS of 62 at 1080p high and staying very smooth throughout the entire thing. I also downloaded PC Building Simulator for fun and uh, that game basically runs like a dream with zero issues at all. Now after running those benchmarks, I decided to compare this server versus 
my Asus ROG gaming laptop I have back here uh, from a year or two ago, which has an i7 8750H and a GTX 1060 six gigabyte. And it looks like my laptop has, uh, yeah, it's been beaten by something that you can literally run on any device uh, anytime. So, uh, but that's okay though, because your shadow server isn't just limited to gaming either, which makes it even more exciting for me as a content creator, because you can use things like the Adobe Suite to edit photos or videos as well. And I honestly think I'm going to use this shadow server to give my laptop more power, extending the life of it. And uh, yeah, helping me edit and render videos on the go. This is also very cool because it saves you on battery because it's not utilizing the discrete GPU the entire time. And along with that, it keeps heat temps down because again, not using the GPU and there's no crazy active cooling going on to run your server. Again, you're just basically streaming Netflix that is if Netflix were as a full on gaming PC. But anyway, you know what I mean? But man, just when I thought I needed to buy a brand new laptop, it looks like I may be able to keep mine a little bit longer. So sweet. All right, so I know a lot of this seems like a bit of magic and witchcraft to be honest, but being that you can stream full desktop games and applications to any of your devices, provided you have the internet connection for it, for just $11.99 a month if you get a yearly subscription and $14.99 a month if you play, pay month to month, uh, you get a ton of gaming and workstation horsepower at your fingertips that you can literally use at your house, log out, and fly to like another country basically, get an internet connection and log in again, and all of your data and your games and whatever you're working on will still be right there where you left off from. So what do you guys think of this service? Do you think that gaming PCs are becoming obsolete and uh, streaming like this is the future? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what your guys' opinions on this whole thing are. Now let's go ahead and transition to family time. So today's visual fam comment comes from Bahamara Entertainment. And they say, will an MSI GTX 1650 Super fit in a Dell Optiplex 9020? Well, this is gonna be a very quick answer and the answer is yes. But I'll elaborate a little bit just so you guys have the right idea. So I've done it in a couple of videos already lately and all you really need is either a power supply that has a six pin PCIe connector or if you wanna use the stock 290 watt power supply in the 9020, you can basically just pick up a SATA to six pin PCIe connector and it will basically work without any problem on the stock power supply. So anyway, that's all for me today, everyone. If you found this video helpful, remember to drop a like on the video and if you enjoy my content and you wanna see more, get subscribed and turn those notifications on so you'll always know when a new video or stream will be going live on the channel. Have a great holiday weekend, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.